Hey Cupcakes, it's Mushroom, and we are back on Ark Survival Ascended. We recently found out from Wildcard that the center has been delayed indefinitely. So until we find out more information, we're going to be turning our focus onto Scorched Earth, which should be dropping on April 1st. Today, we will be going through the top PvE base locations that you need to claim to give yourself the absolute best start on this difficult map. But don't worry PvP survivors, you guys are going to be next. Scorched Earth fully lives up to its name as a desert map, bringing all of the challenges that accompany such a hostile environment. Your biggest challenge, especially early game, will be finding water so proximity to water is the first criteria for a place on our list. The brutal storms that rage and knock out your precious electricity make windmills a necessary addition to your base. Windmills, however, function depending on the level of wind where they are placed. If you have 50% of wind at your location, your windmills function 50% of the time. Therefore, our second criteria is a level of wind. Our third criteria is proximity to resources and high demand locations. Lastly, our fourth criteria is how buildable the terrain at your location is. While each location may not check all of the boxes, they'll all check at least two. Let's get into it with base one. Starting off at one of the easy spawns in the plateau before the red orb. We find our first base location at 6543. It's the easy spawn within the valley with mountains all around you. Some of the great pros to this location is that it has a water vein right below it, so that's going to help you out early. As well, you'll be spawning very close, so it's going to be very easy to get to this spot. It also is a very quick run to Red Ob, so that's going to make boss fights, as well as server transfers, an absolute piece of cake. In the mountains behind you, there are tons of metal and obsidian, as well as crystal, which is going to make metal runs so much easier to get to. This location is also close to the Wyvern Scar, but not so close that no stray wyverns will ever find their way to your base. Some cons of this location. Along with resources, rock golems will also spawn along the cliffs behind your base, so they can easily find their way there. While this may not be an issue later on in your playthrough, it will definitely make your early game start just a little bit harder. As well, this location is not very flat and it's not very large, so it's not going to be the easiest spot to build in. And lastly, the wind here is only 85%. Typically, you'll only get 100% wind out in the desert and the spots right along the edge between the center of the map and the desert. So here, having 85% is a very good find. Okay, moving on just a short fly away is going to be our base location number two. This is going to be on the plateau located at 63.4, 57.8, all the way to 68.0 to 62.0. This location is right above one of the best water spawns on the map. As well, it's one of the flatter spots that you'll find, so you'd be able to build quite the large base here. As well, it's secure enough you only have to wall off two-thirds of the base, as the other side looks over an oasis, so it is quite safe, and you won't have to worry about any rock golems or anything falling on your base. It's a safe distance away from the wyvern trench as well, so there will be no stray wyverns around you, but still a short fly away. Not only is it overlooking an oasis, there's also a water vein right behind you at 66.8, 60.5. For the cons of this location, the level of wind here is quite low. The wind is only around 25%. As well, it's not very close to resources. Okay, so we are going to be following along the old riverbed to take us to the third location on our list. The coordinates to this location are 74.4, 68.8, where we will find a flat spot under the cover of Desert Spikes, and it's going to be one of the flattest spots on the map, where you'll be able to make yourself a massive base. This location is directly beside water, so irrigating your base is going to be an absolute breeze. 
as well with how flat it is, it's going to be so easy to build yourself a great looking base for all of my PvE building survivors out there. It's also late right beside the desert, so loot trips are going to be an absolute piece of cake. The mountain behind you has pockets of metal, and there's actually silica pearls in your oasis as well. So the cons to this location. As it is an interior spot in the map, the wind level is pretty dismal at 10%. But if you follow down the oasis a little bit, you actually get to a spot at 7369.4, where the wind is 65%, so I would recommend setting up your windmills there. Okay, so now we're going to be moving on to our next location. Location 4 is nestled in a dried section of the riverbed conveniently just down the valley from Green Ob at 58.662.2. This is one of the largest sections of flat land on the map, so your base here can be truly spectacular for all of my great builders out there. It is beside a pond for easy water, actually it's beside multiple ponds. Being close to Green Ob, you have an easy way to get silica pearls as well as do boss fights and server transfers. The cons to this area, the wind at this location is unfortunately only 25%. It's not very close to any metal or obsidian pockets. As well, it's pretty far from the wyvern scar so that you're going to be safe from wyverns, but it's going to be a bit of a fly to try and get your eggs and wyvern milk. Okay, so we are going to be moving on to location five. This location is a relatively flat outpost high in the mountains surrounding the Red Ob at 59.7, 38.5. Not only is this a great spot for mining resources, this outpost boasts an impressive 85% wind. Red Ob is only a very short fly away, and the Wyvern Trench is conveniently close by as well. As well, the plateau that this is located on is quite flat. The cons of this location, the closest water source is on another plateau at 58.8, 40.2. As well, it can be dangerous with rock golems spawning on the mountains just in your backyard. Base location number 6 is another great location in the eastern badlands. Nestled under the shadow of the green ob, you will find the perfect plateau for a big base at 49.4, 77.6. This location boasts very level terrain, and as it is only up the hill from Green Ob, you can very easily get silica pearls in this location. As well, it's going to be very easy to do boss fights and server transfers. As it is so close to water, your base is going to be irrigated no problem at all. One of the best perks to this location is that you are right beside two oil veins, so you will never run out of oil and gasoline. You are also conveniently beside the desert for fast loot runs, as well as there's small metal pockets on the mountain directly behind you. The cons to this location, the wind is only 40%. I want to do a special shout out to a spot that I had a hard time not putting on this list, but it didn't check enough boxes, so I unfortunately have to leave it out. I wanted to mention it though, for survivors who are looking for one of the spots on this list, but find that they're already taken. You can check out this spot, which is at 54.8, 78.0. It has oil veins, it just isn't close enough to water to warrant a spot on this list. So moving on to location number 7. As you may have noticed, finding decent locations with high wind is very difficult, especially if you don't want to be in the middle of the desert having to deal with death worms all the time. Our next location is treading the line between the northern dunes and the blue ob at 14.5, 37.2. This location can be easily irrigated from the blue ob, as well as having very easy, as well, accessing the desert for loot runs is going to be very easy. Lightning storms will be a fear of the past in this location, as your windmills will be powered 100% of the time as the wind is 100%. The mountain behind Blue Ob is a good spot for metal as well as crystal. The cons for this spot. It's not particularly flat, as it is starting to get into the dunes, 
so you'll find it's easier to build with pillars than it will be to build with foundations. It's not very central to everything else on the map. As well, if you're trying to build in this location early game, it's not going to be the safest spot and it's going to be a little bit more tough for you. For our next location, we're going back inland to the peak of the Central Canyons at 45.651.4. This location overlooks an oasis and green ob in the distance, so water is not going to be an issue at all. There are scattered oil veins on the mountains by Green Ob, which will be a short fly away. The wind in this location is decent for the interior of the map, but it still is only 65%. The terrain here is quite flat, so it's going to be very easily buildable, but also very safe for you, as you're going to be elevated away from all of the ground dangers. The cons to this location. It's not a great spot for mining resources, as well as it's not as easy to get to the obelisk as it is in some of these other locations. Our next location is the first time we will be seeing a waterfall on this list. Not something that we would be expecting for the desert map, and it is definitely one for my survivors looking for a spot with a spectacular view. At 36, 48.6, sits a gorgeous flat plateau overlooking a waterfall that flows into a desert oasis. You are a short fly to Blue Ob and the resources in the mountains behind it. Your wind here is still not the best, but it is 65%. The canyon from here all the way to 2150 are all great locations, but remember to try and keep your base as high as possible. Living close to the ground is great until a rock golem falls into your base. Our last location is my personal favorite, and one I believe is one of the strongest locations you can find on Scorched Earth. Before we travel there, please remember to like and subscribe to join me on our little journey through the arcs. And for my current subscribers, thank you so much for being here. Okay, so moving into location 10. Location 10 will take us back down south at 8237, just to the backside of the Red Ob Mountains. We have a desert oasis directly behind us with a water vein, so irrigating the base will be a piece of cake. Especially as this location is close to the desert, having such an easy source of water is a luxury. You will have this rock foundation safely shielding you from the harsh desert beyond, so you get a degree of safety that you often don't find this close to the desert. You have one of the absolute best places to mine obsidian and crystal on the map. Venture into the mountains and you will find an underground tunnel that conveniently re leads right to Red Obelisk. And this tunnel is absolutely stuffed with obsidian and crystal. So it's one of the best mining locations on the map. As well as it's directly beside the desert. You'll be able to go on loot runs, no problem at all. Not only is this location close to Red Ob, it's also very close to the Wyvern Scar for easy egg runs. Just make sure that the Wyverns don't chase you back to your base. This location is definitely a personal favorite for me, and it means a lot to me as it's one of the first places that I ever built on Scorched Earth. And I fully believe it is the strongest, so if you have your pick of any location on this map, I would really strongly consider choosing this location. It may not be the safest, but later in your playthrough when you're able to handle the creatures that spawn around, you're going to appreciate how convenient it is. And the very best part of this location, it is 100% wind, so you will never have to worry about your precious refrigerators going off and any food or any eggs spoiling. For those that made it here, thank you so much for being here, and if you like this content, consider subscribing to stick around and join us on our journey through the arcs. If you have any other great locations, drop them in the comments below to help out your fellow survivors. That's it for today. Stay fresh, cupcakes.